video three in the topic how do musical instruments make sounds. In this video you're going to be looking at waves and reflections. This lecture is presented by Professor Joe Wolfe. So we're continuing with the discussion of sounds and their application to musical instruments and to the voice. Sound waves are rather important partly because we're interested in waves travelling to the ear and waves travelling in wind instruments and in the vocal tract when we're speaking. We're also interested in waves in strings because of stringed musical instruments and as well as waves that travel, we're going to look at waves that don't go anywhere, what we'll call standing waves. We get standing waves in the strings on a violin or a piano or a guitar, for example. Now, it's nice to look at the waves in strings, so we'll start off with a wave in a very heavy string in a rope, which allows us to make the wave travel slowly so that we can see the passage. Here's a wave pulse travelling in a rope. It gets reflected when it meets the fixed end, where the rope is fixed to a point. Now, to understand a travelling wave in a string, remember back to oscillations. An object oscillated when it had mass that gave it inertia and a springiness, like for instance a mass on a spring. In the case of the wave travelling in the rope, the tension in the rope is what restores it to its straight shape and it's the mass of the rope that allows it to overshoot. So once the tension sends a little mass on the rope moving, that mass keeps moving until the tension is so shaped as to bring it back. Let's have a look at this example here where at a peak in the wave pulse on the rope, the tension in the rope on either side acts to restore the rope back to its straight position. Now, the wave speed V in a rope or a string increases if we increase the tension. Here for example we have a wave in a rope that's tensed with the weight of two kilograms and here's a rope where the tension is provided by the weight of eight kilograms. We can also notice that the speed of a wave is larger if the string is lighter. Here we can actually see a connection between a heavy rope and a string and we can see the change in wave speed at the junction. We can also see that there are reflections where the heavy string meets the light string. Now, the speed of a wave in a string is very important because it determines the pitch in string musical instruments. Let's see if we can work it out. We know that it depends on the tension in the string and whether the string is light or heavy. The tension is a force. so. Units of force, let's think back to Newton's second law, F equals MA. So the units of tension will be kilograms times meters per second per second. How to distinguish between a heavy string and a light string? Well, the characteristic property is the mass per unit length, also called the line density and given the symbol mu, the Greek letter mu. So, 
we've got to combine tension, kilogram meters per second per second, with line density, m kilograms per meter. The wave speed's going to be in meters per second, so obviously the kilograms must cancel. Let's try tension over mass per unit length. That gives us kilogram meters per second per second over kilograms per meter. That gives us meters squared per second squared. Okay, remember our wave speed is going to be meters per second, so that suggests that the wave speed V is proportional to the square root of the tension divided by the mass per unit length. Well, if we do the mathematics, it turns out that the constant of proportionality here is 1. The wave speed is just equal to the square root of the ratio of tension to the mass per unit length. That means that it takes four times as much tension to double the speed. Let's go back to that demonstration where the tension is provided by the weight of two kilograms. What about the speed of sound? That's important, uh, apart from anything else, to and the pitch provided by the weight of wind of eight kilograms. Instruments. Now, there's got to be an inertia and a springiness, and the air provides both of those. When a sound wave goes past, lumps of air are moved or accelerated, and it's the inertia of the mass of the air that allows them to overshoot past their equilibrium position. The air is also springy. When we compress air, we raise the pressure. When we rarefy it, we lower the pressure. So we might think that the speed of sound is proportional to the square root of the pressure divided by the density. That is, in fact, correct. But in this case, for thermodynamic reasons, the constant of proportionality is a little different from 1. Now, reflections of waves are very important to produce standing waves, which in turn are important in musical instruments and the voice. Let's see close up the reflection of a wave in a string at a fixed end. So the arrows here are showing the tension in the string at a couple of points. Let's look at reflections of a wave pulse in this wave machine. In this machine, the springiness is provided by a saw blade in the center that resists being twisted. The inertia for rotation is provided by these long bars. So, let's start off with the end of the wave machine fixed. We send a pulse along. It's reflected and the reflection comes back inverted. If we see the real pulse traveling from left to right, we can imagine an inverted pulse coming from the right-hand side, and what we see is the sum of the two pulses, the sum of the positive pulse and the negative pulse providing zero displacement at the fixed end of the machine. All right, what if the end is not fixed? but completely free to swing. So we disconnect it, send the wave pulse along, and now the reflection comes back on the same side. The reflection at a free end is not inverted.
Well, we can't do that one on a string, but in fact, reflections at a free end are rather important in musical wind instruments. For instance, at the end of a flute, well, I only have a piece of a flute here, but I'll leave it open at the end, and it makes a difference whether it is open and free, the hair can move in and out, or closed, makes a big difference to the sound. It's also important whether the excited end is open, as in a flute, notice that I blow across the top, or in a reed instrument where the end that you blow is almost completely closed by the reed in that particular case. More on those later on. So what happens at free and fixed ends, open and closed ends in a pipe? Let's look at this cartoon. Here the dots represent the density of the air and the dark patches are high pressure or high density. The pale patches are low pressure and low density, uh, not to scale. The actual variations in reality are quite small. So a dark pulse travelling down represents dense air that arrives at the open end, shoots out and sucks air behind it, leaving a little suction, a little rarefied area. That sucks on the air behind it and so a pulse of negative pressure, of pressure less than atmospheric, goes back up the pipe. On a closed end, the high pressure pulse arrives at the end, can't travel out and so it squeezes the air behind it and so a high pressure pulse travels back along the pipe. Special thanks to Sebastian Frick for doing all the filming and editing of this video. If you'd like to find out more about sound or the voice, then it would be a good idea to visit these FizzClip sites. A web page about the music group at UNSW can be found at this final address if you are interested in finding out more about this topic.